before the Raiders run to their first World Series title ever, they had a memorable and chaotic regular season. On today's show, I'm bringing down the 10 best moments from the Rangers regular season in 2023. All that and more on this episode of Locked On Rangers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Rangers, your daily Texas Rangers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked on to the World Series champion Texas Rangers. I'm Bryce Paddock, a cripplingly addicted Texas Rangers fan covering this team for 10 seasons, including all five as the founder and host of this podcast. Thank you all so much for making Locked On Rangers your first listen every single day. If you're not already, you can follow me on Twitter at Bryce Paddock. You can follow the show at Locked On Rangers. Hit subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform and on YouTube, where the best way you can help grow the show is to comment nearly any single thing below. Now, before we get into this episode, today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. It's $150 if your team wins. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Now, the Rangers had a beautiful, chaotic, wonderful, terrifying, uh, thrilling regular season before their run to the 2023 World Championship. It was filled with many ups and downs, many it's so over, we're so back moments. But today I'm focusing on the 10 best regular season moments, at least for me. And it ranked in no particular order except for chronological, um, because there were so many great moments. And looking back at, at a lot of these these regular season games, there's there's quite a few that it was it's easy to forget about. And I, I kind of want to remember the beauty of the regular season because the postseason is great. It's wonderful. It's, it's live and die, but there's something special about the regular season as well. Just the ups and the downs, the ebbs and the flows, the, the rhythm of it. It is the rhythm of baseball and the rhythm of life. So let's start with the first of these top 10 moments and where to start, but opening day. And this this is a sign to me that this was kind of what this season was going to be like. It was going to be a chaotic, weird, wild, wonderful season. A Jacob deGrom matchup with Aaron Noah that turns into an absolute shootout. 11-7 to victory, a nine-run fourth inning. I mean, this was this was our sign that, hey, this year is going to be wild. It's going to be wacky. It's going to be a little bit different, um, and it's not going to be exactly what you expect. I mean, the offense just going absolutely berserk home runs from Brad Miller and Robbie Grossman. I'm pretty sure this was the only game that both of those guys had a home run in the same game. I don't feel like I need to double check that because it, it, it feels very assured that was the only time that both of those guys hit home runs. But hey, Brad Miller hitting home runs on opening day, that's just what he has done in his two-year tenure with the Rangers. Robbie Grossman only coming up with the biggest three-run homers um, because of course he did. And Jacob deGrom having a, a shaky debut with still some moments of majesty. It was such a, a fun and exciting game and really kind of felt like it, it brought in this new era. I mean, taking down, not just taking down, but demolishing the reigning National League champs in that fashion, coming back after being down five to nothing with a nine-run inning in that fourth. It was it was so much fun. It was such a sign of things aren't the same anymore. This is not, this is no longer a bad team. And it, it was just one series. It was a series sweep that whole first series and it still was a little while before we knew for sure that this was a good team let alone world series contender let alone world series champion team we we didn't really know that one for sure until until it was all done and dusted but this was a nice sign in the right direction that whole series but especially that first game of being wacky and wild and cole reagan's getting the decision the win in that one i mean it was just such a fun moment just having baseball back and being excited about it and having that new ace, that new rotation on the mound and feeling very confident and being right in my confidence in the Rangers being good this year. That was a a really, really nice um, first sign for this Rangers team. Now, the next moment that uh, really brings me a lot of joy was that Sunday night game in Houston. Back in April, the Astros were struggling and it looked like, oh, this might not be the Astros year. This might be the year that uh, things start to really fall apart in well, it, it did in Game 7 in the ALCS, but not before the Astros really kind of turned things around about it midseason and got their usual level of hot. But this was a sign that the Rangers 
were very much different at this point. They had you know, won two series. They had lost two series um, at this point. And they head in, into Houston, and they didn't have either of their, their top pitchers scheduled to, to pitch in this one. They, they didn't have Jacob DeGrom. They didn't have Nate Eovaldi. And um, it was a, a really close, hard-fought game, that entire game, really until Marcus Simeon's Grand Slam, where they dropped a sixth spot in a nothing-nothing game in the top of the seventh inning. And uh, this team showed that they can come back on anybody. They can pile up runs in a hurry. They can have those big innings. And that was the hallmark of this team all year and this offense all year of not being afraid, not being that same team, and uh, getting to from Valdez often, which they did often, especially in the postseason, often, and really got under that guy's guts, that guy's skin. It was a lot of fun to see that, and hopefully a trend that will continue into 2024. But that was a big here we are, here it is moment, uh, a, you know, putting this rivalry back into being a rivalry as opposed to a one-way beatdown, which it had been for basically the entirety of the time that the Houston Astros had been in the AL West. One way or another, one of these teams was significantly better than the other one. They were very rarely equal. 2015-16 was, was kind of equal, but this was kind of your sign that, okay, this team hadn't won a series in Houston since 2019. This is something that is uh, is new and different. This is a sign that, okay, maybe you can start to believe just a little bit more. And every single one of those little moments was just a little bit more, which is what this Rangers team needed very much so early on to give themselves the confidence that, hey, yeah, we lost 94 games last year, but this is not the same team. This new rotation, this new manager, this new GM, everything is different, and it very much was in 2023. And the third moment of this season that was among my favorites, it's not just a particular moment, it was a series. The Rangers lost the first game of the series against the A's, their first series at home against the A's this year, um, four to five in a really frustrating loss. And then the next two games, this was, that was uh, April 21st. And then the next two games, there were just two moments or two players putting on absolute individual greatness in masterful performances. That Saturday was the 18-3 to win where Adolis Garcia just took it on himself to absolutely obliterate the Oakland A's. Just absolutely annihilated them in one of the greatest single-game individual performances I have ever seen. Like, it was just absolutely unreal. Three home runs and a pair of doubles and, you know, probably should have been four home runs and a double, which would have equaled literally the greatest individual game I've ever seen, which was Josh Hamilton's four home run game in Baltimore back in, I believe it was 2012. Um, but he was just on another level. And we, we saw many El Bome performances like that, including game seven in the ALCS against the Astros, including game one of the World Series, including basically that entire ALCS. Um, Adoles Garcia can just take it to another level when he is angry. And boy, did they make him angry. Oh, he also got hit by a pitch, which kind of is what started all that. And then the next game in that series was Jacob Grom's best outing in 11 strikeout performance with just 80 pitches in six innings and no walks. He was, I'd say that was the best performance that we saw from Jacob DeGrom this year. He had another 11 strikeout game against the Orioles back on April 5th. But um, for me, that was the greatest one because he only needed 80 pitches. He probably could have gotten out there for seven and gotten like 14 strikeouts or something. But they said, no, nah, we're going to rest you. Unfortunately, that was his next last start of the season for the Rangers. But still, an absolute masterclass by Jacob DeGrom seeing why the Rangers paid so much money for him and, and why he is the best pitcher on the planet by far when healthy. Hopefully we can get more than six starts out of him this year and maybe even one or two in another deep playoff front because, man, when he is on, he is incredible. And so is Adolis Garcia, that individual game. I hope we don't forget about it because it was one of the many, many moments of brilliance from Adolis Garcia, including his, his walk-off bomb in the regular season and his walk-off bomb in the postseason, which I know none of us will ever forget. Coming up, we're going to look at a couple other moments, some greatness from Nate Eovaldi, and a couple of blowouts that really just warm my heart thinking about. Right after this, we're from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 Moneyline bet. That's $150 if your team wins. 
If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. You can go check it out if you want to get some odds on Luka Doncic to win the NBA MVP. If you want to bet on Dak Prescott to bounce back in the last couple weeks and win the NFL MVP, you can go ahead and do that, or you can check out the Rangers World Series odds for 2024. Check it all out at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Shout out to the Everydayers for making Lockdown Rangers your first listen every single day. We're back on Tuesday, breaking down the state of the farm system, where the Rangers farm system stands as of right now, and what things are looking like. Actually, that'll be on uh, Wednesday's show, I believe. Maybe Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. Check it out. You'll, you'll see. You'll see. You'll see. Anyway, let's look at the number four moment of these 10 best moments in the regular season. This is one that, that came early on when things were still uh, a little bit in doubt for the Rangers. It was the day after the Rangers snapped their four-game losing streak. This was when the Rangers were in a, a bit of a dire place early on. The Rangers had went to Cincinnati. They lost three straight games, all three. Uh, well, actually, only two out of the three were one-run games, but uh, all three of them were walk-off losses in Cincinnati. They had lost the first game of that series at home, a four-game series against the Yankees. And things were looking dark. And then Jacob deGrom comes out and, and pitches pretty well through four innings and gets the Rangers a win to snap that streak. But he leaves with forearm tight- tightness, and that would be the last start of his season. And the Rangers are thinking, oh, God, here we go again. This is this is going to be rough. It's, it was a while before we knew it was going to be Tommy John surgery. At that point, it looked like he would just be back in June or maybe July, or you were hoping, yeah. Well, if he needs till August, then that's fine. Um, but that was not the case. He did have to get Tommy John surgery. But at that point, things were in question. The Rangers' hopes of legitimacy in 2023 were in question. And who's on the hill but Nate the Great Eovaldi comes in with a complete game shutout, just three hits, no walks, eight strikeouts against those stinking Yankees. And the Rangers don't do much offensively. Not much. Really, the only offense is an Ezekiel Duran home run. That is literally the only runs that the Rangers score. The Rangers only had five hits, and they all came from the bottom three in the order, and one of those was a pinch-hitting Robbie Grossman. So not a whole lot of offense in that one, a win the Rangers needed very desperately. Then they come back, come out, of course, the very next day and drop a 15 spot. And that was early on in the season when the Rangers just would break out the bats on Sunday afternoons. They would just have so many of those routes in a row on Sunday afternoons. That was the first of uh, four straight Sundays where they would score double digit runs. Um, But that performance by Nate Eovaldi coming up in the clutch when the Rangers needed him most, that was a common theme of Nate Eovaldi. He also had another complete game against the Pirates on the 23rd in Pittsburgh. He had another near complete game against the A's uh, later on in the season. I mean, he was just, he was always stepping up when the Rangers needed him most, especially, especially in the World Series game five clincher and basically all throughout the entirety of the playoffs. Outside of game one of the World Series, Nate Eovaldi was absolutely masterful throughout that postseason and throughout the first half when the Rangers were definitely in jeopardy. It was in doubt if this Ranger team was actually that good. The, the rest of the rotation were having their bumps and bruises. I mean, there was there was no and there was no Jacob DeGrom, and the Rangers hadn't made a trade for Jordan Montgomery and Max Scherzer yet. And time after time after time, Nate Eovaldi stepped up in a big way. It felt like of the regular season starts, that was his most important because things really could have taken a turn after that things really could have gotten off the rails and and the rangers could have you know started going on a a skid and they didn't and that is a huge credit to nate Ivaldi stepping up in that huge moment now next moment you're going chronologically was uh i do want to give a little shout out uh, an honorable mention to that 10 game road trip against the aos that uh, ended on a a blowout victory with uh with it a a gem from Andrew Heaney, who got out of a bases loaded situation with no outs um, on that Sunday game against the A's. Um, but this comes a little bit later on. We go all the way, skipping all the way to the month of June. It was a Saturday, June the 3rd, a 16-6 to blowout of the Seattle Mariners. This was, 
this is maybe the best. Actually, probably the game after this was the best I felt about the Raiders all regular season long. Um, but this 16 to six blow at Brian Wu's debut, it was not even a, a good game. It was actually a really, really bad game from Andrew Heaney. He only lasted three innings, but the Rangers offense just annihilated this poor rookie. Brian Wu just took him to task, dropping six runs on him in just a pair of innings. And they did not let up. They just kept on going for blood. They had dropped five runs in the seventh inning. Really put this game very much to bed. It was it was already 10-3 to three at that point, but they said, you know what, screw it. We want some more. And then they kept on getting more and more and more. The entire offense just annihilated this poor rookie kid. Hopefully they can keep on annihilating him throughout his Mariners career. Um, but yeah, this was an absolute walloping. And it looked like the Mariners' hopes for the playoffs were dead at this point. They they clearly weren't. They had a nice little run in August, and the Rangers handled them pretty much all year long outside of you know three out of four games in Seattle at the end of the season where the Rangers could have logged up the LS. But again, we all know how that went, and that is just fine with me. But that 16-6 to blowout victory was just absolutely marvelous, and uh, I will always look back on it very, very fondly. This last one... Or this last one, this this segment too, is is um, moment number six, one that you might have forgotten about because I almost have. But looking back on this game, this was one where it really sealed that this Rangers team was incredibly resilient. This is one of their most resilient comeback wins. This was on Father's Day, where the Rangers became the Blue Jays' fathers for the first time this season. Not the second time, which which will also be mentioned later on. But this was a huge comeback victory on Father's Day, an 11-7 to victory, a massive outing for Corey Seager, who had a four-hit game. But the Rangers were down 5 nothing after two and a half innings, heading into the bottom of the third. John Gray was already knocked out of this one. This was one of John King's best performances. He gave three and a third innings in that one. I mean, he was absolutely on another level. And that one, even Joe Barlow pitched well in this one, the Rangers bullpen combined for, what is it? Six, seven and a third. Um, no six and two thirds innings of nearly scoreless baseball. John King did allow just one run, but the Rangers came back and dropped two runs, then three runs, then three runs, eight unanswered runs after being down five, nothing to win 11 to seven on a Sunday game where their starter was out before the end of the third inning. This was just, an incredible display of, of fortitude by this Rangers offense, a four-hit game from Corey Seager, a four-hit game from Ezekiel Duran, and a three-hit game from Leo e. Tavares. That's the thing that I loved so much about this offense and that I will continue to love about this offense. Next year, I'm assuming it will be similar in that manner of, you know, when when someone is going a little bit low, when everyone when someone is is not having the best day offensively, there will always be two or three more people to pick them back up. As long as a couple guys are hot in this lineup, this Rangers team will continue to score runs. It's what they did all season long in 2023. It's what they did all playoffs long in 2023. And it's what I'm assuming they'll continue to do in 2024. The depth of this lineup is pretty much unmatched by uh, just about anybody outside of the, the Atlanta Braves and uh, maybe the Dodgers now that they have Shohei. I still I still kind of lean towards the Rangers in having a a deeper offense, I should say. Obviously the top 3 of of those other two orders are are pretty darn good, but the Rangers order from 1 through 9 all year long and all year in 2024, I'm assuming, unless some weirdness happens. Um, it is just incredibly deep and incredibly resilient and will literally always trust the guy behind them to come up big and not try and force things. That is what the best offenses in the history of baseball do. It's what World Series champion offenses do. And it's what the Rangers did all year long. And this was one of the best examples of that team offense mentality that we are never out of it because we can always drop six or seven or eight or nine runs on you in a single inning or a couple of innings and turn any game on its head. Coming up, we're going to look at the final four top 10 moments of this regular season and a couple of honorable mentions. Right after this word from our sponsors. Now, let's look at number seven on this top 10 list of the best moments of the Texas Rangers 2023 regular season. This came on June 21st 
in Chicago, a game after one of the most egregious replay overturn reviews that ever happened to anyone in the history of mankind or replays or sports. Uh, the Rangers getting absolutely robbed the day before in Chicago of of what should have been clearly a win on a, a great assist in left field by Travis Jankowski, but replay review determined that somehow Jonah Heim was blocking the plate, even though he very clearly wasn't. And Jonah Heim took that personally and had the game winning three run home run. It was not, it was just extending the lead at that point, but it would be the difference in the game as the Rangers won six to three in Chicago and did the iconic celebration of putting his hands to his ears with the same motion as the replay review from the day before as a little moment of haha justice review that you can't because i absolutely freaking crushed it one of the uh great cases that one of the things that kind of put him over the top in his all-star case to to say hey i am the best catcher in the american league i am a force offensively defensively and i am a petty king who will hold this garbage celebration over you for the rest of time um and he should have and it felt like ever everything after that uh every replay after that felt like it kind of went against rangers maybe maybe it was just my own personal bias maybe it was all of rangers fans collective bias uh of, of feeling attacked and uh, there were quite a few other bad replay decisions, especially that series in Houston during the regular season. But I digress. This was a fun, petty moment from Jonah Heim. Love little moments from that. And um, it was just a very, very fun moment from Heim time. Jonah Heim, one of the best Heim times of the season. Now, let's look at the number eight moment. Adolis Garcia. His grand slam, that whole game in Houston, when the Rangers went down to Houston, started what would be a five-game active winning streak in Houston, which is, is still active. At the end of July, the Rangers had lost two very close games on the 24th and the 25th, and it was a very frustrating series because it felt like the Rangers had really outplayed the Astros that whole series. They lost 9-10 to in the first game of that, that series, and then the next game, they lost 3-4. to And in this one, they left absolutely no doubt. It was it was the highest the highest blood pressure between the Rangers and the Astros in the regular season. There was the hit by pitch of Jordan Alvarez on an 0-2 pitch by Andrew Heaney, where he was clearly not intended to be hit. Um, and then Framber Valdez, in, in his Framber Valdeziness, decided to absolutely just chuck one right into the back of Marcus Simeon and got to get away with it and keep hitting batters, including nearly hitting Nathaniel Lowe yet again. Um, but justice was served by Juan Adoles Garcia with that massive grand slam and a 13 to five victory over the Houston Astros where Marcus Simeon got to deliver his most iconic shush moment to now White Sox catcher Martin Maldonado and absolutely glorious comeback win by the Rangers. They were down 3 nothing after the first inning, and they dropped two spot, a four spot, and a seven spot to completely turn the game on its head in the third, fourth, and fifth innings and just shushed those Houston Astros away. The first of five straight wins. The other four, in case you forgot, were the four road games in the ALCS where the Astros didn't win a single home game even though they had home field advantage. What a darn shame. What a glorious moment that was. And a very, very fun grand slam by Adoles Garcia hit onto the freaking train tracks in Houston. One of many, many iconic home runs by Adoles Garcia in Houston. Now, the number nine moment of this regular season was the mop in Toronto. Mop is a four-game sweep, a, coin, a term coined by the Cespedes family barbecue boys. The Rangers were heading on, were they, they were on a two-game winning streak after the most depressing regular season loss of the season. Uh, they had gotten swept at home by the Astros. They were just in a miserable end of August run and early September run. Um, but they won the, the second two games of Evan Carter's major league career against the A's. Then they head into Toronto, really needing a four game winning streak and they got it. And those games were despite the final, the final score. I mean, almost all of those games were very, very chaotic. And it was a full team effort of basically every single person on that roster stepping up in a huge way in all four of those games, especially that first game. It was a 10 to four victory, but it was not that close. It was, it was closer, much closer than that. Um, 
throughout it. I mean, that was that was the game that started off with Mitch Garver forcing Chris Bassett to balk him home because there was nobody covering third base, and that was the first run that the Rangers scored, and that was a big, big Evan Carter game. He had his first major league home run. He had his first outfield assist that kept the game with the Rangers having a lead. Um, and Jonah Heim had a couple of extra base hits after coming back off the IL. He looks absolutely dreadful. And there was some thought of, Oh no, did, did Jonah Heim come back too early? Is Jonah Heim going to be able to produce anything offensively for the rest of the season? And he had some big moments in the playoffs, including a couple of bombs off of Framber Valdez, including a bomb in the World Series, and some great defensive moments. But that was a huge series for Jonah Heim. Corey Seager got, I believe that was his thousandth hit. He had, it felt like a thousand of them in those four games against the Blue Jays. A couple of home runs by Robbie Grossman, of course, coming up huge for the Rangers in that one. Big moments from Nathaniel Lowe and Marcus Simeon. And, and Josh Smith as well. I mean, basically everybody on that roster. I mean, even Max Scherzer had a really, really great game in that series. That was when he went down with the injury that we thought was going to end his season, and it didn't. Jordan Montgomery have a had a seven shutout inning performance in a Rangers blowout, and it was just a massive, massive series for the Rangers to get some of their good juju back. Granted, they did get swept the very next series against the Guardians of the most. It, it we're so back. It's so over team. That was one of the most we're so back moments of this entire regular season. And I absolutely loved it. And the number 10 moment from this regular season, of course, was the final win for the Rangers of the regular season, a six to one victory over the Mariners. And what felt like just the most dire, dire moment and a game where Andrew Heaney outpitched Luis Castillo when the Rangers clinched, their wild card berth and then apparently got so drunk that they they got shut out the next day but it didn't matter it does not matter it will never ever matter this was a huge huge team win and in a moment that felt like everything was slipping away after those first two losses where the rangers could have and maybe should have put the mariners to bed in those first two games in seattle because the rangers had dominated the mariners all regular season long and uh they just couldn't and then you get to, oh no, the Rangers are going against the Mariners' ace, and they had to start Andrew Heaney, who at that point had lost his spot in the rotation. But Andrew Heaney came up absolutely huge with four and a third shutout innings. Big moments from Josh Spores, big moments from Cody Bradford and Jose Leclerc to close out that one. A, a just massive uh, six-run performance. They got four runs in that third inning and drove Luis Castillo out in the third inning. And Andrew Heaney... The Rangers' number six starter at that point had outdueled the ace of the Mariners to seal their trip to the playoffs in what would be their first World Series championship season. It was just a delightful moment, a a big backs against the wall moment for the Rangers. And, and even that game 162, it was a, a very hard fought um, pitching matchup with uh, a little bit of Martin Perez, with a little bit of Dane Dunning, a just team effort where they could not get to the Mariners starter in that one. But hey, it does not matter. There's also an honorable mention of the beginning of August for the Rangers, where the Rangers had, had made two big trades at the deadline for Max Scherzer and Jordan Montgomery. And it felt like, oh my gosh, this team that has dominated all season long, they just got their reinforcements. Nobody can tell us anything. The Rangers are going to annihilate everybody. They can win the AOS by a million games. The Rangers went, you know, 12 and 2. 12 and 2. In the first half of August, by the 15th, little did we know that an eight-game losing streak was coming starting on August the 16th, which was decidedly unfun, very decidedly unfun. But that first half of August, I mean, that that felt like, even though the Mariners and the Astros were hot on their tails, it felt like, oh, I mean, the Rangers are 12-2 and two in the first half of this month. I mean, they're just going to run away with this division. It's going to be easy. The Rangers are going to have, you know, maybe even the top seed. Who knows? Um, that wasn't the case. And uh, it didn't matter because that first half of August was incredibly fun, in including that 10, another honorable mention, that 10-game road trip uh, against the AL West teams on the West Coast where the Rangers won every single series. That was a huge, we're actually here. This is really that team moment 
in early May when there were still some doubts about this team. This was just such a fun and chaotic regular season filled with so many wonderful, delightful moments in a world championship season that we will never, ever forget. That's going to do it for today's show. Thank you all so much for listening and subscribing. And until next time, don't forget to enjoy World Series champion Texas Rangers baseball.